What's up developers and welcome back to a new video where we will be diving into two topics that we'll be using quite a lot in Laravel, which are configuration and environment variables. If you want to help the channel out with the content I create, now head down to Patreon where you get benefits just as a private Discord group where other developers can help you out with your coding issues. If you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. In the previous video, I've mentioned that the core settings of any Laravel application can be found inside the config folder. Right here, you will find stuff like broadcasting, cache, database connections, hashing, mailing, queues, and a lot more. If we open one, so let's say the service.php file, you will find the same structure in every configuration file. It will start off with a return statement, where it will return an array with key value pairs inside of it. Now each value inside this array is accessible by a convict key. So every value that you see, so domain, secret, endpoint, token, key, secret, and region, are accessible by a configuration key where you need to pass in the file name, the key, so mailgun, postmark, says, and the value, separated by dots. So let's access the dot .env variable of mailgun underscore domain. If we navigate to our routes folder at the bottom and open the web.php file, remove our variable name, and let's also remove the array that we're returning. All right, go right above our return statement, where we're going to define the convict method, which is used to access the convict folder. Inside the convict method, we need to add a set of single quotes. And as you can see, IntelliSense is already recognizing the values that we can access. But what we want to do is to go inside the services.php file. So let's say services. Then we need to make sure that we access mailgun. So we need to write down dot mailgun. And you already see the three values where we can choose from, domain, endpoint, and secret. And what we want is the dot domain. I actually forgot to wrap it inside a DD, so a die dump. So let's go right in front of convict. Let's add DD, open in curly brace, go to the end and close it off. Save it. Let's navigate back to the browser, refresh it. And as you could see, the return value is null. And that's happening because mailgun domain has not been set inside the dot env file. So let's open the surface.php file one more time. Right after our .env value, we're going to add a default of test underscore mailgun. Save it, let's navigate back, refresh it, and right here, you'll see that test underscore mailgun has been printed out. Now let's navigate back and let's undo what we just did. And let's also delete the DD inside our route. Now let's talk about the .env helper function we've been seeing quite a lot in here. Now the env method that you see right here is called a helper function, which will simply pull a value that has been passed inside of it from the .env file. Keep in mind that the key that we're seeing right here needs to be equal to the key inside the .env file. And it's also case sensitive. A best practice in Laravel and actually in any other language is to always define your .env variables in capitals. So let's open the .env file from the root of our directory. And right here, you will find quite some environment variables that are needed by the framework. So think about your database settings right here, your broadcast driver, your crash driver, your session driver, and way more. But if we search for an environment variable called mailgun underscore domain, you'll see that it does not exist. So most of the .env variables that are defined inside the convict folder do not exist. Once you want to use it, you have to double check whether the name is inside the convict folder or not. I won't go into all of these variables that we have right here, but I do want to point out two pretty important variables that every Laravel developer should be aware of. The first one is at the top, which is the app underscore key. Now the value of it is a hashed string, which is encrypted, and this is never empty. Once you clone a Laravel project from the internet, you will most likely have an empty app key, which means that your application will not be visible in the browser. So let's remove it. Save it and let's navigate back to Brave. Refresh our page. As you could see, we've been prompted with an error message saying that no application encryption key has been specified. Once this happened to you, make sure that you go to the CLI. And inside the CLI, you perform the PHP artisan key colon generate command. What Laravel will do for us is generating a new artisan key. If we hit enter, navigate back to the browser, Refresh your endpoint, you'll see that our page is back up. And if we go to our code editor, you'll see that our app key has been set again. 
Now the second environment variable you should be aware of is the app underscore debug on the line below. As you can see from the value, we're dealing with a boolean. Once the value has been set to true, like it is right now, a user of your application will see debug errors. Once it has been set to false, they won't. This is great when working on local projects versus projects that have been in production. So let's test it out. Let's set it to false and let's delete our app key one more time. Save it and let's navigate back. Refresh it. And a minute or two ago, Laravel threw an error message that the key wasn't set. Right now, you'll see that we've been hit with a 500 error code, which is a server error, but the error message has not been printed out. Let's navigate back to the code editor and undo what we just did. Save it. And the last thing that I want to show you is using environment variables outside of your convict folder, which pretty much works in the same way. Let's open the web.php file right above our return statement. Let's create a DD. Inside our DD, call the env method and simply pass in a string right here where we need to add the key of the value that we want to print out. In our case, let's say db underscore host. If we save it and navigate back to the browser, refresh it, you'll see that our local IP address has been printed out. Before we wrap up this video, let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code one more time. Let's remove our DD, save it. And this was it for this video where we went over configurations and environment variables in Laravel. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.